And welcome, everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube. For a new donation deck, we got Jeskai Fires. You may remember we played that Jeskai Midrange yesterday, and I really enjoyed that deck. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you didn't see that deck, you should uh, check that out. It's similar to this deck. kind. It's kind of similar. It's more like built around like the flicker effect, but it doesn't have Fires of Invention. Today, we got Fires of Invention. We got the blue and the red Cavaliers that we're really focused on here with Fires of Invention. This is a pretty uh, pretty standard deck. The, for those of y'all that have been playing standard, I'm sure you've seen multiple times. Uh, this specific list that we're playing here, like I said, this was a donation deck, so a viewer submitted this list. But it was also a 5-0 list uh, from Magic Online, and the, the person um, that, that went 5-0 with this um, Got a 5 0 list published on the 11th and the 14th of November, both of the, the last two updates with the exact same 75 here. <clears throat> so that seems like this 75 is probably doing some work. So we're going to go ahead and give it a try ourselves. Um, so it looks like we got a couple of spy glasses in here to try to stop Oko. The, I've only played this, this version one other time a few weeks ago, and I struggled against Oko quite a bit because I was playing these Cavaliers and they were Okoing my Cavaliers, turning them into Elks, um, and I was sad. But hopefully, this the main deck spy glasses. That's what that's probably what they're for to slow that down. Um, it's morning. It's right there. Um, but. Uh, Sorry, that was weird. Um, but yeah, besides that, it's just kind of normal Jeskai stuff. We don't have any time wipes in the main for a big sweeper, but there's one Realm Cloak Giant for a big sweeper. But no time wipes. They could like pick pick up the Cavaliers. And the other thing is, I'm 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 uh, really sad that we don't have Kenrith. We played the the Kenrith yesterday, and that card was just absolutely amazing. It was so good, and so I'm sad that we don't have a Kenrith in this deck. But we don't. Anyway, let's try to get some damage in with these big Cavaliers and win some games. Like we always do with donation decks, we're going to play through a league. We're going to see if we can get to five wins before two losses. And let's see how it goes. No, I do not play them, the submitted donation decks off stream before playing them on stream. I play, you know, if there's like a list that's submitted, I just play it on stream here. Um, but no. Hey, what's up, Salsa? I don't play very much Arena off stream because I play so much on stream every single day. So I don't, um, I don't spend much time playing Arena. I usually, like, you know, I make decks and all that kind of stuff. But I don't play... Uh, games too much. <clears throat> yeah, I would think that the first Kenrith is better than the fourth Cavalier of Gales, but I guess the Cavalier of Gales are to... You know, like, they, they do... This isn't a fight you can win. <clears throat> oh, they do kind of help, hero thing you know... Fix your draws and help you dig towards more Cavalier of Flame. Because, yeah, having getting Cavalier of Flame is a big part of the deck for sure. Yeah, it's just the thing. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to get, like, burned out of just, you know, playing just too much magic and, and get burned out. I've got it. No, no, don't play you. There you go, play you. All right, Cavaliers. Need more troll, Saza? Yeah, love that. Love the Orzhov troll deck.
Yeah, this is like our best start. Turn three to fairy, turn four, fires, was drawn from dreams. We would definitely want the red cavalier though also. Hmm. No red cavalier. I've got time. No, I haven't made a cyborg guide for it. No. So yeah, we just got to spend 10 mana worth of cards, plus got to get that scry too to put two extra lands down to the bottom. So we're digging pretty good. Um, pretty good for a red cavalier here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we spent three, yeah, turn three, we spent three mana. Turn four, we spent eight mana. Turn five, we spent 15 mana. That is a pretty good curve. We're only going to be spending like 15 mana a turn though, the rest of the, um, the rest of the turns here. <laughs> Thanks, E4. So we know the bottom seven cards right now are not... Because um, we know about the bottom five from Drawn from Dreams. And there was there was four lands in those, <clears throat> so we after I put these two to the bottom during upkeep, we're gonna know the bottom nine cards are eight lands in them. Gone through. There we go. I'll protect you. Oh, I, I thought I clicked on this op, not the Bone Crusher Giant. Eh. Oh, wow. That was good. Hit a radical idea to be able to discard this Phoenix and hit another Phoenix, but they said they just cast radical idea. That's not three spells. They need two more one mana spells. Hey, Photon. Good evening. It's a one mana spell. I have 
Bond of Insight. I don't think I've ever seen Bond of Insight in this deck before. Oh. Okay, good. I thought that was Maximize Velocity at first, or whatever this other thing is. Like, Maximize something. Maximize Altitude. Okay, well, our hand was amazing. All right, so we got these disenchants to be able to blow up these Drown Secrets. Drown Secrets is definitely the best card my opponent has. Narset's awesome. Dispute, awesome. Um, Realm Cloak Giant, not awesome. I don't think Bone Crusher Giant either. Oh, definitely not Spyglass. Like Prison Realm just exiles a Phoenix. But the thing is, is, like we probably want these Clarions to maybe get like a bunch of Phoenixes if need be. Give give our creatures Life Link also. No, you do not get your opponent's cards. No. Yeah, it's true. Devout Decrees is better than Ether Gust. Good, good call there. Good call there. That's just a straight up upgrade. Dispute even good. Hmm. Do you want to counter turn two Drown Secrets? All right, let's give this a try. Oh yeah, so yeah, you just have you just have additional cards. It's called a sideboard. You have additional cards that are not in your deck. Sorry about the sound bug. This happens from time to time. There, those are additional cards that are not in your main deck. They're still part of your overall deck. That after the first game you can switch out cards that you had over there. <laughs> yeah, that was Arena's dubstep dub step mix. There we go. <laughs> So I got nothing for next turn, but then my turn four is going to be awesome, and then my turn five is going to be awesome. You know, like so we're going to have awesome turns for the next next few turns, but I'm just going to do nothing here on turn three. So they're going to try the mill strat. Looks like. Yep, looks like they're switching to the mill plan. Hmm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> which is kind of okay for us. Like we have, we should have a fast enough clock to be able to handle that. It's a lot of ways. I'm not ma minusing Narset. All right, maybe I'll minus it this next turn. I don't want them to attack it with an Arclight Phoenix. Of course, the card that I really want to find is is Red Cavalier here, which we had more Kenrith's. Hmm. I don't do anything with fires. Uh, disenchant and devout decree. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be minusing there. Just get a Phoenix in play and kill my Narset. That'd be rude. Now, Devout Decree can exile Ashiok also. No, there's a Red Cavalier. Alright, still only one Red Cavalier gone, though. Right? Right? Yeah, just the one. Hmm. Rough. Put thoughtfulness cool. before action. Tuck those down to the bottom. Well, Narset stops like their their deck is all about drawing cards with you know like all these discoveries and and ops and radical ideas, all this stuff. Like Narset slows them down quite a bit. That's the that's the point of having Narset here. I'd rather them counter Prison Realm than counter Cavalier. But next turn I'll play Teferi first to protect Cavalier. Hey, what's up, Real Smoif? Thanks that Twitch Prime sub. Ooh, that's our storm count 10. Tenths of the day. I leave you. 
All right, that's another sub goal. Towards our next 12-hour stream, we are getting there. I'm thinking, thinking we're going to be doing the 12-hour stream. Um... Hopefully they have disdainful stroke. Darn. And uh, Chine. Sorry, I'm late. Also, getting that uh, resub in there. Thank you so much, there, Chine. All right, bounce this thing. Like it. What am I? I'm at eleven cards. Like if they don't play anything, any blocker or anything, uh, wow, that hurts. Oh, that was just the perfect card to have. Wow, that was the perfect card. All right, they milled me out. So they're going for a whole bunch of counter spells. I mean, they could switch back, I suppose. So I kind of want the Spyglass for Ashiok. I also played a Jace. Maybe I just have enough answers, though, with the devout, devout Decrees in the Prison Realm. Yeah, we'll, we won't do it. We'll just play Bone Crusher Giants to attack. Get some more threats in here. Hey, Triton, please. What's up, Triton? Got the Cavaliers this time. Now let's dig for. Oh, we gotta put something back. I guess we put one of these back. Let's either put that back or put Opt back. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna say look for fires. Hey, Aaron Dash. Oh, I mean, same. I mean, we just lost the game, game two. We won game one. We're doing good. So we'll be casting Opt this turn, followed by just hard casting Bone Crusher Giant on turn three. Yeah, looking for a land for Opt to turn into a land for us.
I don't think I, I sideboarded out the... Uh, it's a land, but that's not an untapped land. I want to go Bone Crusher Giant into Fires. Is it greedy to put down to the bottom? Probably. But we have like, 27 lands in here. Some of them have like Negate, Disdainful Stroke. None of those counter Bone Crusher Giant. Negate would counter Teferi. Yeah, I want the pressure. I, I guess if I would have cast the Opt on my main phase, then could have hit. Yeah, could have played that Temple. Main phase, that is true. Alright, so they went back to Phoenix here. I feel like it'd be pretty tough for them to hold up. Um Counterspell while playing three things to get Phoenix back. So I can just simply cast Cavalier here and it does not get negated. But if they have... If they have Disdainful Stroke that we've seen. It does get Disdainful Stroked. All right, that's good. Oh, sub goal should be 11. My bad, my bad. If I would have just kept the fires, I would be able to like play fires, they negate it, then I devout to create the phoenix. But I didn't.
Hey, pinties. Thanks for the tier one sub. So my plan next turn is play Cavalier of Gales, have two mana, activate Cavalier of Flame. I think that's my plan. Right now. Our 12th sub of the day, reseven for a second month. Now, fine piece, thank you. Um, I don't think there's a site that like really um, ranks the archetypes too much, but um, if you use yeah MTG Goldfish here, um, there's like you know, it has like some rough percentages of like how much each deck's being played, kind of thing. Of course, we had lethal whether or not we killed that thing. And we're 1 0. Yeah, a Crazy Pyro donated for this deck yesterday. Um, this, was, this was a 5 0 list that the person that 5 0'd with this deck um, got it published twice, the exact same 75 back to back um, on the 11th and on the 14th. All right, got a new cosmetic, got a new pack. Get a mythic or a wild card. No, getting a rare. Getting some gems. All right, GG's. Want to know? Yeah, I think they sideboarded out the creeping chills. To be able to bring in like the counter magic and stuff. It's connected by cable to the Yeah, my uh I'm touching the router right now. The router's right up here. So yeah, there it's hardwired in. My internet's not great here though, even though I pay for very good internet, it doesn't it's it seems pretty spotty. And I, I think that's a big problem, too, is that, like, it'll just go through little five-second spurts, like, where it's not as good kind of thing. Like, even when I do, whenever I do, like, speed tests and everything, like, most of the time it's good, and then other times it'll just be real bad for some reason and then go back. It's not very consistent. The Royal, the Royal Scion Planeswalker minus 8 ability says it does damage to any target. Same as Dread Horde, Haste, Creature, 1-1 one, one thing. When you use Lazatep Plating, the 1-1 one, one deals damage to itself. It has to target something. Um, that would be that would be the case of your opponent choosing to, to have it target itself. Um, kind of thing. Like, they get to choose whatever target they want. So I guess that could be your opponent choosing to... 
Um, okay, so the Planeswalker doesn't have to target anything. All right, my plan is, is reset this Pride Mate. <clears throat> they recast Pride Mate here. It's a 3-3. I Clarion, and Pride Mate's out here. That's my plan. If we were fortunate, we would draw an untapped land before next turn, and then you know be able to go Fires plus Clarion, but if not, we'll just go regular Clarion and play this Temple. All right, perfect. No, Buskin, you're fine. You're fine. I I don't know if it's the same word or not. Like I don't. I don't. Yes, yeah, so I don't exactly understand the the question, and stuff. But I don't really have a great answer for you. Or someone in chat probably does. Five five reach. Protection from multicolor, but our creatures are not multicolor. I'll keep the land in hand just to discard Cavalier of Flame. No, Protection from Multicolor doesn't save it from Time Wipe, because, yeah, it's not being targeted. Time Wipe's just a global effect of destroying all creatures, so Protection doesn't apply. Yeah, I don't... See, Buzzkin, I, I guess I don't I don't know why it would. You said whenever if you have Lazotep immunity versus the Royal Sons ultimate, it can just opt to not attack. I mean, they would still have to choose a target. They they have to choose a target with that card. No, I didn't want to actually put Ether Gust back. Oh, well, it's fine. We'll just discard this Ether Gust to the next Cavalier of Flame, it's fine. Okay. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, they can choose any target, so... But yeah, they could have chosen their own Planeswalker or... Or anything. They don't really have anything good to get back with the Cauldron of Eternity, but that's pretty cool. I guess that thing's pretty good. Maybe I should be getting rid of these drawn from dreams. Not lethal. Not yet. But it's pretty close. Like, they're going to be dead the next turn. Oh, wait. Maybe it is lethal. If they block like that. No, because they go to one. They'll go to one. Man, Fires of Inventions with Cavalier of Flame is pretty great. I know, we need Kenrith. Get that trample in there. All right, cool. You figured it out? Awesome. Good, good, good. Um, I'm basically worried about, like, the Ajani getting pretty big and out of hand right away. I think that's, like, the only thing to be worried about. So I don't really want Ether Gust or Spyglass. I mean, I could play a Devout Decree, a Mystical Dispute, or a Narset. Probably not the Dispute. Narset doesn't seem that good when we don't have very many spells. All right, I guess we'll just have this one Devout Decree. Maybe it'll do something. The only black creature that we saw is just the one mana 1-1. One, one. No, best of three should still be there, Zalvis, but you have to switch over to all play modes. You know, go to the button like around this area of the, the main screen where it's probably set on um, arena play modes. You have to switch it on over to all play modes and then you can see, then you can find best of three. Yeah, we could have disenchant for Cauldron, but I'm not very scared of Cauldron. There's probably one cauldron in their deck it's just not really a card that I'm planning for not too worried about it So basically, I just have a really good curve here. So 
Devout Decree could maybe be better on something else than Cruel Celebrant, but I'm happy to spend my, my turn two casting that, because I already have something I want to spend on turn three and then turn four and so on. This is just a pretty perfect hand that we have. I have a plan. A poor opponent. Yeah, that was our that was our record. We went two and two. We won two matches and lost two matches. Might be a bad idea. So what happens if you play a traditional event with Oko in your deck and then he gets banned while you're in the middle of the event? Um, the They're going to be announcing the banned and restricted. Like the banned and restricted announcements are going to be on tomorrow. Are going to be tomorrow. But they won't take place into effect. As far as I, I can tell, I don't think they'll take place into effect until the 21st. And so it'll basically be like you have three days to finish your event and otherwise you're just closing it out and you don't win prizes kind of thing. And they'll be like they'll reset the events basically. On Thursday. I am not making this up as I go. I should have put a fires back. Yeah, so even if Oko gets banned tomorrow, I think we'll have three days of Oko still. Um, they could change it and do just like, you know, an emergency update kind of thing, but what's the most likely thing that's going to happen is you wait till the Thursday update on the 21st, and then it takes it Here goes into effect at that point. I think our deck's more powerful than what my opponent's doing. I think this cast, you know, spending tons of mana every turn. A little more powerful. No, you do not get gems for card styles back. No, if you, yeah, if you bought the card style for Oko, no, you just, you're just out those gems. Uh, you, you know, you still keep your card style for Oko and everything because you can still play Oko in Historic, unless it gets banned in Historic, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, the last Field of the Dead was just banned. It had a card style that you could spend a thousand gems on. You did not get gems back for that.
I know, because I spent a thousand gems on the card style. I, I didn't get any gems whenever Field of the Dead was banned. So that's how I know that I'm not going to get gems. Yeah, Aaron Dash. Yeah, this Jeskai Fire is pretty powerful. We've had a whole lot of playing Fires of Invention on turn four, and it's made the deck look really good. I guess this castle's just going to come into play. Yeah, I guess it's just coming to play tapped, so I guess I'll just play that now. Um, my plan was to Bone Crusher Giant kill their thing on turn two, and then turn three, play Bone Crusher Giant, then turn four, play Drawn from Dreams. But that gets kind of messed up with them playing Witch's Oven. Because if I try to bolt one of their creatures with Bone Crusher Giant, then they just um, sacrifice it to Witch's Oven and my Giant goes away. So instead, we just play the Castle on turn two. Just get that tap land in here. Uh, play the Bone Crusher Giant. That's unfortunate. I think my opponent's going to win this one. Yeah, that's just lethal now. So I need to draw... Take a land out. I need to draw Deafening Clarion. I still get to draw a lot of cards. That's not Clarion. So yeah, the Bone Crusher Giants looked pretty rough if the opponent, yeah, how the opponent can steal it, but then also, yeah, I don't like how it can steal it, but then also if they just have the Witch's Oven out and everything. So yeah, we're going to have a couple of Disenchants for Witch's Oven, or Spyglasses for Oven and, and Familiar, um, and heck, you can Spyglass um, Priest of Forgotten Gods too, if need be. Got a good, good amount of <clears throat> interaction here. So let's give this a try. It's not a great hand. So having these two Cavaliers at the top end. That's a pretty poor hand for my opponent, too. Six lands. What am I doing? I need that land. I 
know my responsibility. Don't worry. I got this. Slow them down. Try to get to this cavalier. Huh. Let's try this. Wasn't too prepared for that. All right, and we are more prepared for that now. Let's get this lifelink in here, too. I've got time. We're, we're down a game, Dragon. Yeah, we're down a game. They had way too many lands there. Having nine lands made our life pretty easy. So we're going to take out these Teferis on the draw, play some Aether Gusts instead. And let's, let's give this a try. Yeah, they had a pretty poor hand. My hand was awesome. And so, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't a close game there. Need white mana. But this is going to be a keep. White mana. Not white mana. I could honestly see them taking any one of these four cards, to be honest. Alright, took Clarion. Double Midnight Reaper is pretty rough. Well, Fire's Invention was an awesome draw for me. 
Now we just need an untapped land. And then we get to go fires, dreams, and uh, everything's turned on. Okay. Well, this isn't great. That's seven. Well, those cards are great. So we should be able to kill them here. Midnight Reaper is going to do a lot of damage. I don't want to give them more draw steps. This should just be game here. Let's keep that ugly looking disenchant without a card style. Okay. Three and O. Oh. I'll do a reset of Arena here with one hour. Um, you know, it's kind of preemptive reset before it gets, before we have more memory leak. <laughs> Thanks, GG's. Alright, so we're 3-0, and then we'll be playing 
Uh, standard Cascade up next after this. Oh, no, yeah, no idea about guess of what's going to be banned in tomorrow in Pioneer. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't play. I've, n I've never played Pioneer before, so I don't know. Hey, Ninja. Oh, GG's. As our last opponent saying that uh, they were watching one of one of my videos while playing and then when realized that you were playing against me. That's that's awesome. GG's there, Ninja. Uh, sure. So the thing is, like, these are all tap lands, you know, right? Like, we don't have an island for these castles. Basically, the reason why to keep would be because Temple of Epiphany is strong. I guess we just mulligan that. That's not a great reason to keep. Well, we got six reasons to keep here. Five of them being lands. Anna Tran with the cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna Tran. So it's it's a mystery what my opponent's playing. And Clarion could be really good. I guess I'll just put it down to the bottom though for now. Any suggestions for a Mardu version of this deck, including Kenrith and Red Cavalier? Um, yeah, you miss out on the card advantage that blue can give you and card selection and everything. You know, if you're playing a Mardu version, uh, you don't get, you know, yeah, you don't get the blue, ca you know, not having blue Cavalier or Drawn from Dreams. Those are a couple pretty important cards. Ah, it's a flash deck. Well, flash is a great... Uh, this is a great matchup for my opponent. That's what I mean to be saying, like... No, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing the event after this. Stuff. Yeah, they can quench this now, but whatever. I'm not going to pay too live to keep it from being quenched. It's not that important of a card. They can just bounce it with Brazen Borrower. A Spectral Sailor, of course, is the card that I'm going to name if it resolves. Yeah, what is Flash? Yeah, Flash could struggle with aggro. People that can play, you know, people that spent have like a lot of one mana cards that they can play two, three cards a turn pretty quickly, because if you just play one card a turn, they usually can just counter one card a turn. So when you can start playing more than one card a turn, that's where they struggle. And that's lethal there. This is just a real bad matchup. Uh, 
Um, yeah, Midnight Reaper would be good. I uh, I don't I don't know about Cauldron of Eternity. Cauldron of Eternity doesn't work with fires. Like it doesn't like the reduced cost. I mean, I guess you can still just cast it though. But I mean, yeah, Midnight Reaper is a great card. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do here. <clears throat> I didn't. I never had Clarion. I put the. I scribed the Clarion to the bottom last game. Yeah, we didn't see a creature before we saw that Clarion. Well, hopefully we can draw a fourth land and we can have Teferi plus Dispute. We got a backup Teferi. Unfortunately, they did have a Dispute. I guess we still want to go blue because of Cavalier of Gales. Wow. Oh. GG. So I think I just keep Fable Passage, like, like don't crack it. So I would just grab a mountain out, but if we draw a mountain anyway, we would be able to cast the Cavalier. I just can't have all sorcery speed stuff against the flash deck. Veil of Summer does get banned. That deck's going to be really good. Veil of Summer does get banned. 
going to be a tough deck to beat. It's going to be a lot of flash and aggro to try to beat flash. If there's no Veil Summer. All right, three and one. That's that's a really tough matchup for Jeskai Fires for sure. All right, let's see how this main deck Spyglass does. Yeah, my opponent countered seven spells that game. Which happens. Castle Lock Twain wouldn't have been like the worst thing ever to be able to name also. Sorry, excuse me. It's not a very good minus. I got like bouncing the food is the best thing to bounce here, but then my Teferi dies. I guess it's just fine if Teferi dies. This might be a bad idea. Yeah, so spyglassing the cat means the second thing. That that's an activated ability of sacrifice of food, return it. Like so now they can't do this part. They can't just sacrifice a, a food to return cauldron familiar. This is hardly my worst defeat. Looking for blue mana. Play a main phase because we have a lot of temples. You know, we could find like Temple of Epiphany here. I guess I could get red and then I definitely can play Cavalier Flame. Next turn. Perfect. So we get to respond to the once upon a time by getting rid of the trail of crumbs so that even if they choose to put the tra trail of crumbs back on top, then they're just looking at it uh, in the once upon a time it's gonna go down to the library to the bottom so that just puts it down to the bottom of the library all right let's look for fires There's a Fires and a Clarion. So 
So now I can cast opt. Oh no, I can't just cast opt and then cast fires. No, that doesn't work, and then do something else. This will still count as one of my spells. So yeah, we're just gonna be ditching this opt. It still tapped that better though. In case this got like ether gusted from my opponent. So that's, I'm not going to play like really more lands, but I, want, I like having the six. We get the three Cavalier activations. In case something happens to the Fires of Invention, we got triple red for Cavalier. If Oko gets banned, then Teamer fires with a b whole bunch of elementals. That could be pretty sweet. Gotta get some Vivian's arc bows. Let me get arc bow invention back. Cause that deck was sweet, but I couldn't ever beat Oko to save my life. But five color arc bow invention. Yeah, for, for best of three, uh, yeah, so you we were saying, why don't we play Fae of Wishes? Best of three, I, I assume that's what you're asking, why don't we play Fae of Wishes? Um, it just takes up a whole lot of sideboard slots, and just this deck just has Drawn from Dreams. They can go find the, the cards that you need. All right, extra spyglass in, disenchants in. So they were Sultai, right? Yeah, so they're gonna have Oko. Right, were they? Let's view battlefield. Yeah, they were Sultai. All right, let's give this a try. Yeah, piece together a good Cauldron of Eternity deck when Oko gets banned. Yeah, it'd definitely be a lot easier without Oko to make Cauldron of Eternity work for sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good one to, to go back and retry. This is Collective Soul Shine is the name of the song.
Spyglass is going to be pretty rough here. You know, if they're playing, you know, Oko, Vraska, Golgari Queen to deal with Spyglass, and then, but then, so if I try to have to name those, then also need want to name, you know, like Cauldron Familiar or, or Witch's Oven. There's kind of like too many things to name. That hurts. That hurts. Perfect mana with those basics. Wow, they just got rid of Trail of Crumbs? Whoa. That's good for me. That's really good for me. That card's super, super powerful. Tale about me is absolute nonsense. And welcome to the feast. Surely you see the humor here. Definitely hoping my opponent was going to crack that Fabled Passage. I wanted to Aether Gust whenever they cracked Fabled Passage, but they didn't. I'm just going to be busy with mana. Salty Hercules with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. Thanks for Reese up in there. It's our thirteenth sub of the day.
witch's oven. into my face and put on your true shape. Fortunately, with that witch's oven, you know, if they don't have witch's oven, I just don't have to block, and I can just take it, then they don't have a blocker. But with the witch's oven, they can just sacrifice anyway. to your folly. So I think they're going to get this one. Because that's likely. I invite you to change your ways. That's a really good draw. But we'll have, um, we'll have a game three. It's even better. Okay, that's good. Getting the flyer. That's a good one. I know, we need that Kenrith for trample. Problem is, is this lethal? Do they have six damage on the way back? They sack familiar here, they bring back, they put in both familiars. Do two to me, I go to four. They put in another familiar again to go, put me down to three. They attack me down to two. They sack, bring back, I'm at one. They'd have to have another food. They have two blockers right now. Um, so 10, 12, 14. So I, I would have 14 damage to them, but they have two blockers plus they gain a couple of life. I think I have to leave one blocker back.
Well, that hurts. Trail of Crumbs is so good. Remain blind. So the second Witch's Oven, this is this is lethal here. Kill my blocker, attack. I mean, I guess it didn't even matter with the second witch's oven with just the murderous rider as lethal. All right, so we're gonna be on the play here now. See how we do. No, I did not have lethal. Basically, I could have dealt an extra eight damage. Like as you saw there, they were they were at eleven um, after my attack. I could have dealt eight more damage. If I would have attacked all out at them, I would have dealt eight more damage to them. So they would have gone down to three. So no, I, I could not have killed them. Ugh. The thing about this deck is like these are the like these are not mulligans. This deck needs lots of lands, that's why it's playing lots of lands, but it's just not it's not an ideal hand at all, but it's not a mulligan. Yeah, not having any Kenrith for Trample does hurt in this matchup for sure. Yeah, we need we need that Kenrith for Trample. Yeah, the yeah. If you had if you have a white cavalier in this deck, you're basically not casting it unless you have fires of invention. There's there's not that much white mana. It's mostly all blue and red to to make sure you can cast the blue and the red cavaliers.
The good thing is my opponent has Veil of Summer, and that's not a, a good card against my deck. I don't have hardly anything that targets. It's like just like the Ether Gus is, and like to. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter what's a fairy, so it's really not a very good card. The card, yeah. Yeah, White Cavalier can return fires, but it, it puts fires back into your hand. Darn, they cycled Veil. Vale. It's definitely the right thing to do. I was hoping they wouldn't do that, though. It's a problem with Spyglass between Oko and Golgari Queen. They have very good answers to it. Pretty surprised they tapped their guild. Of I guess they'd they'd rather keep the goose alive than than the Golgari Queen. A little surprised by that. No, I don't think I ignore Vraska go face. Like we're still a good amount of ways from from killing them, and I don't want them to be able to draw more cards and draw into Oko. How much life they're gaining with this thing. Um, it's probably going to be three attacks of, you know, three attacks of ten to kill them that we're probably going to need. I don't think I'm really changing the clock. I'm definitely not, you know, definitely not enough to make like the it worth like the like three Vraska activations. It's certainly worth it to kill Vraska. Yeah, like imagine them for Asuka, tick up, sacrifice this thing, pay one trail of crumbs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, planar cleansing wouldn't be bad. You'd have to I guess you'd only be able to really cast with fires of invention. Though.
Yeah, Miss Mono Blue. Yep. Yeah, we're going down the line here. Where we played Mono Blue. It's a tough call on Trailer Crumbs or one of these witches' ovens. Going with an oven, though. It's a tough call. Seeing if they're going to be playing like Golgari Queen, maybe they don't have the most mana for Trailer Crumbs, but that's probably just the wrong wrong decision by me there. Um, I think for Cascade, I want to play uh, Orzhov Sacrifice. Oh yeah, Gruul Aggro does seem just kind of perfect for that event. Because, yeah, your Once Upon a Time just always gets you a free Pelt Collector in play. That does seem just kind of perfect. So I need Spyglass to shut this down. But Spyglass is also just going to die to... To Golgari Queen. Yeah, I should have killed the Trail of Crumbs with that disenchant. That was the incorrect move. Yeah, so yeah, we'll go a little bit later than normal Rex, um, uh, or, you know, like, I guess going towards, like, towards, like, the normal time, but we just started early. Yeah, I'll, I'll be playing the standard Cascade event tonight, too. Yeah, my hair is definitely getting long. Could use a haircut. Haven't gotten one of those yet, but yeah. You can tell on, up top it doesn't really get much longer anymore, but the sides and the back... Especially the back, it's getting really long. I mean, I guess naming Witch's Oven forces them to play Golgari Queen this next turn. Which, if they're playing... If they're paying four mana to play Golgari Queen, that's good for me. <laughs> yeah, they have less than nine minutes because all of these triggers and everything.
I'm pretty sure I took out Bone Crusher Giant as like a way for direct damage. I guess maybe I want to upkeep Castle. We couldn't have been allies. If I upkeep castle, I only have four mana. Cavalier just gets ether gusted. So if I just eat their guts, they just respond anyway with all this stuff. Oh, that really hurts. They had a Veil of Summer. Ugh. I actually let their Veil of Summer do something. That really hurts. Liana? Jeez. That's gotta be game. Yeah, the reason why not to attack all three at them, yes, it, it would... Um, it would force them to eat a food, but then it's pretty easy for us to take lethal. Um, on the way back, uh, the a lot of things kill me. Loyal and silent. 
and so I wanted to have a better chance of staying alive. You know, didn't want them to like just have a three, a random, you know, another three three with Oko attacking me or anything like that. Um, you know, one had enough in the air to kill them the next turn, either way, and it wasn't lethal because they could crack a food. If I would have ether gusted the trail of crumbs first, then, like, if I would have just ether gusted before combat, then they have to just let it go because they have to have the the food available to it because I have the triple attacks. So that's that was like the big mistake I made there. Should have just done that before attacking, before declaring attackers. I don't know how I'm supposed to kill my opponent here. Why can't we be playing a Kenrith? Servant anyway. Be uh, Veil does not protect against Gust if Gust is on the stack, but the either Gust was not on the stack. Like it wasn't targeting something on the stack; it was targeting a permanent on the battlefield. And Veil of Summer protects permanents on the battlefield. Oh, that's two. Find a use for you later. All right, so yeah, that, that's the 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 one thing that this deck really needs to change is get Kenriths in there. You just have to play Kenriths. Just get Trample. So I. You know, I couldn't get past, you know, like, just one ones blocking my Cavalier Flames. Uh, the Bone Crusher Giants did not look very good. But I, I would be playing two Kenrith in this deck. I would cut a Bone Crusher Giant and a Cavalier Gales and just play two Kenriths. That's what I'd recommend here. Counters are just too good not to play. Uh, more of them. Yeah, then also just the life game part can help you stay alive for just you know getting pinged to death like we were doing, like we were getting pinged to death there. Um, but yeah, the list played pretty well. Um, Spyglass would be good if, if it wasn't so easy to kill Spyglass with, you know, Oko and Vraska and things like that. Um, but yeah, got to get Kenrath's in here. That card is too, too strong not to play. All right, that's Jeskai Fires, though. So there we go. That's Jeskai Fires. So if you're watching the video on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And, of course, hit that like button. Um, and also leave some comments. Um, let me know what you think about uh, putting Kenrith's in here. And if there's anything better to do against Sultai food um, than, than that. Um, but yeah, there we go. Just got fire. So if you're watching the video on YouTube, uh, yeah, I already said all that. <laughs> Sorry. Long day. Long league there. 
But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.